Hi, Kat here for LightWave Digital. In this little quick tutorial, we're going to be talking about LightWave's Spotlight system. Spotlights have been in 3D programs for decades, basically since the inception of them, and LightWave is no different. We've had spotlights and other types of lights in LightWave since the beginning of the program's um, lifespan, uh, dating way back to 1990. LightWave's light system, though, has a very unique and robust set of features while remaining simplistic and easy for just about anybody to understand within just a few minutes or just by looking at it. And in this case, we're going to demonstrate that by taking a look at what the spotlight in LightWave does. So we're going to go and select Spotlight. And we can see right here the image that's being rendered out in front of me in VPR, which is our iterative renderer, has changed. So we've got a light in here somewhere. That's in our scene. Now, it doesn't have very much going on right now, and this is not the default. I deliberately set this so you can see what a spotlight is doing. What we're going to do here is we're going to change the spot cone angle. Now it feels more like a spotlight, right? We also have spot soft edge angle, which is represented by the more orangey lines rather than the spot cone angle in OpenGL. So these lines do have particular function there. They're there to tell you where the umbrum starts and where effectively it ends. Now keep in mind these two values can be animated. Um, they can be animated with envelopes, they can be animated with envelopes and other types of modifiers driven on top of them, and they can produce some really, really interesting effects. And one of the things I wanted to demonstrate to you um, was what this would do with a image shown through it. LightWave's had this function since I've been using it, and it's something that we would use in visual effects at an extensive amount, um, regardless of whether we were just you know, doing something simple. We would almost always put uh, some type of uh, image in front of the light to give it a little bit of natural life to it, because otherwise CG lights look very CG unless you help them out a little bit by throwing them something that looks a little bit more natural. So we would use a thing called light cookies. Um, when light cookies are animated, they're technically called gobos, uh, as that is actually a lighting term. And if you want to look that up, basically gobos would be either a combination of a, um, a rotation motor that would pass in front of the light a a uh, set of gels that would be offset slightly or they'd be a colorized oil in between them and because of the heat and the gravity as it rotated uh, it would change the shape of the image being projected. If you've seen any of um, the Austin Powers uh, movies where they do the transitions and the gobos and the disco scenes, yeah those are all gobos that are basically being used. Think of it as a lava lamp in front of um, a spotlight but uh, stuck between two pieces of plastic and, and shown through it. Same concept. Now, this comes in really handy when you want to do certain types of things, uh, like change how a light is shaped, or if you want it to only have like a particular uh, shape projection on the floor or another object. And it can also be used for reflection tricks. Um, here's an example. Here we've got a uh, image sequence in the background here. It's an animation of a practical explosion. Okay. So for us to see that, we're going to just drag through here, and we can see that explosion being projected against these objects. Now, it's not very intense or bright or anything like that, because um, we might need to do some help with the uh, image and the editing parameter values, but it's a very handy thing to be able to access if you want to uh, show an explosion up against a CG character without actually having to do any explosion, you know, ray tracing or anything like that. You don't have to put a uh, uh, an image on a card, like a 2D polygon, and then throw it behind camera, and then have that play back on it and use radiosity or reflection ray tracing. You just throw it up against uh, an object with the light shining through a explosion plate, and away you go. It'll do basically the same thing without any real types of work involved. Very, very, very fast thing for the render engine to do. And this gets into really cool stuff because it can be colorized, it can be a sequence of numbers, digits, whatever you might want. And uh, through a couple of tricks, you can actually do this through uh, a procedural texture. But that's something that I'll have to discuss at a future point. One other thing that I wanted to talk about in here is the use of projection images as far as volumetrics go. And another 
thing that we can talk about, which is this size parameter down here. Okay, so in order to do something with volumetrics, we've got to tell this thing to be a volumetric scene uh, so that we've got some light scattering going on. And we're going to go and make sure only the spotlight is affecting volumetrics. Okay, so we're now affecting volumetrics. And we can now see the cone angle shape of the light. So we're going to just zoom into it right there. And you can see also that it's projecting the shape and it's producing streaks very much like a film projector in a smoky movie theater would to produce this effect. And it will obviously change based off of what the luminance values are for the image at that point in the sequence. So very, very interesting stuff. You can think about that in terms of um, how that could be used to produce um, uh, laser effects, um, you know, running uh, very, it's various images sequences through it for volumetric um, psychedelic effects or just very practical visual effects. Now, in previous versions of Lightwave before Lightwave 2018, we did not have control over this cone angle directly. It was something that we had to go into another set of volumetric things for that light and be able to tweak manually. Here we've got the ability to do it directly in the interface. And we're going to back up a little bit so we can see that animation going. Oh, it's 100 meters. We want it to be like 100 millimeters. There we go. So now we've got it right there in the center. Let's change this to a different light type or um, projection image, something that's a little bit more prominent. And we can now see that the volumetric light based off of the values of that image are going to concentrate more intensity at the center and it's going to fall off next to the edge. Um, one of the other cool things is now we can see these lights when they're visible to camera. So if you go to the other side of it, you can actually see what would be the lens or the um, base of the light as part of the shape. And this comes in really handy because um, you know sometimes you want to produce that without actually having to go and produce uh, a geometric effect to you know, create it. It's very easy for me to just go, okay, well there it is. Oh, we're behind the um, the box here, and now it's just a, a light with a cone thing, and it's going to project whatever shape this is. So just surfing through different shapes. Let's go through uh, dirty spotlight. There's a snowflake example. Let's take a look at this. This will be interesting. So you can see that it's now projecting the light in the shape of that. Very much like a film projector. And to demonstrate this a little bit better, let's turn off the environment light. So we can see what's going on. Without having that blue background contribution. And now we've got something that very easily can project the image without really any trouble doing so at all. Of course, volumetric samples might need to be increased a little bit just to clean up the noise in the actual streaks. Let's go eight. But you can see how that works very, very easily. And how nice and pleasing of an effect that is. Let's increase this to one meter. And it's interesting to see it with the snowflake shape. Because let's, for example, um, say you had an engine that was kind of an odd shape. And you needed to have the volumetric streaks streak out of it in the shape of that engine. You very easily do that by just having the shape of that engine, put the light into that spot where that engine um, would have its streaks come from and have the light do the work for you rather than trying to get it to project through geometry. And that um, can come in handy later for additional uh, tweaks in post or compositing. The other cool thing is, is that these lights are now fully able to be reflected and refracted in surfaces. 
Before, with volumetric lights, we couldn't do that. That wasn't something that was possible. Now it is. They behave naturally like they should. And we've got full control over their color. Which objects they can see or affect. So in this case, let's turn off the block. So now we don't see it projecting up against the block, but we do see it up against the plane. We also do things like change the shadow color. The light shape itself will cast shadows. All kinds of wild stuff. And do a Batman searchlight. So we put that Batman logo in there and fire away. So in a nutshell, that's the spotlight for Lightwave 3D. And we'll see you again in a future video.